Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Black Real Estate Dialogue podcast. Here with me, I have Mark Jones II, who's a student at UCLA studying for his MBA. And he's also a homeowner in LA who's living rent free. No, it sounds impossible. We'll definitely talk more about how he can, how he's gotten that done and, and how you can too. Uh, so Mark, appreciate you coming on, man. Man, thank you for the invite, man. I'm happy to be here. Definitely. Uh, so first, tell us about what your childhood was like and what you saw or what you didn't see that shaped your view of building wealth. Uh, that's, a, that's a wise question, man. Starting from the, the root, starting from the beginning. Um, I would say growing up in L.A., I grew up in an area, a neighborhood called Faircrest Heights. Um, it's like near the Grove. It's, it's one of the top uh, revenue grossing malls in the, in the United States. Um, it's near um, the, the Wilshire, uh, LACMA. It's just, it's just near Beverly Hills, a nice, nice area to grow up in. And uh, it was a majority black neighborhood. But what I saw in riding my bike um, a mile west or going up to Santa Monica, going up to uh, the Palisades, I just saw like development. I saw wealth. I saw Rolls Royces. I saw Bentleys. Um, and um, I was always uh, like a precocious child, paid attention, read a lot. And my dad used to expose me to a lot of um, a lot of information, um, a lot about real estate. Um, but I would say the most pivotal thing, just to keep it short and sweet, um, beyond all the reading, beyond the seeing things visually, um, our our house went up in value during that crazy climb before the real estate uh, bubble popped. We bought it in 97 when I was seven years old, Faircrest Heights, uh, for like 197000 And it um, went up, up in 2008, in the 10-year period, 2007, to over $1.2, $1.5 million. Whoa. And so I'm, I'm always, like I said, I'm always paying attention. I'm talking to my dad about it. He, he's, they, they're talking about how they're like borrowing money from the equity and uh, we're going shopping, we're having fun. But just how you said, whoa, I'm like, wait a minute. You're telling me in 10 years, who, who, what, what MD can save that much? What, what lawyer, you know what I mean? There are MDs, there are lawyers. But as a kid, I'm like, we didn't even do anything. Like we painted a couple of times. Like I've been having Christmas every year out here, riding my bike, catching the bus on Pico. Like what's changed? Like, why has it gone up this much? So that's when it sparked in my mind, like, yo, real estate is where it's at. Like if I could own more real estate in LA, it would change the game. It would change my life. Like that's wealth, like a million dollars. That's, that's insane. So that was the most pivotal thing. There was a lot of other things. Like I said, I met, uh, I could talk to anybody as well. So if I see somebody that's doing well, ever since I was a kid, I'll ask them, what do you do for a living? They're just looking at me like, what the hell? But I'm like, <laughs> you're doing, you look happier than everybody else. Like, let me ask you, what's the secret? So uh, besides all that, it was that 10 year run that blew my mind, man. That blew my mind. Wow. Wow. And tell, tell us more about those conversations, uh, what you can remember from those conversations, just going out to people who seem like they were doing well. Like, so, so this is the thing, man, like, um, you know, it, it, it's, there's no mysteries in life. It's, it, you reap what you sow. Um, the thoughts and the actions that you take and that you do, they lead to results, right? And they bear fruit. So I would see people like, and I didn't even know what the cars were, but they'd be like Aston Martins and different things like that in uh, West Hollywood, Beverly Hills. And I would just, uh, I would take off with my mom and go to like cafes by um, the Beverly Center. And people would be just chilling during the week. And I'm like, I'm like, mom, one day I promise I want to be like them. And I would ask them, what do you guys do? So I would talk to young white guys and they would be like, uh, oh, I'm a movie producer. Uh, most people work in Hollywood because it's L.A. Mm -hmm. um, or I'm in real estate. I'm real estate development. Um, uh, and you just have conversations. Like I met, I met the, who was the guy who owned the Clippers? Um, and he was, he was like racist. Uh, and I think Donald I think Sterling, I think. Donald Sterling. So he owns a lot of real estate out here in L.A. I've met him mm -hmm. and I had a conversation with him as well. And that's, it's a mixture of being in L.A. because there's like stars. Like mm -hmm. we have, we have a large number of billionaires. So these conversations, man, it, it's simple things like, you know, um, invest your money. You don't have to spend as much money on like weddings. That 20000 could be invested in real estate. It could be invested in stock. You can invest in a, a business. But I, I met Donald Sterling and I just walked up to him at the Grove and started talking to him. Um, and he's like taken aback because it's like, who's this young black guy 
you know, and I have a button down on now, but I'm usually like with my hat back and just chilling, like yeah. being myself. But I'm talking to him and he's like, you know, well, real estate is uh, no different from any other business. You have to just, you know, work hard, um, um, build wealth and uh, reinvest in yourself, um, be disciplined. Um, same with Rick Caruso. He's a big developer, a billionaire. He'll be walking around at the Grove just chilling. Um, a real friendly guy. And you can talk to these people. And, and, and what I learned is like people hear about like the wealth is amassed, uh, most of wealth. And America's a master real estate, but I love what you're doing, um, brother, because it's like it's disconnected from the average person that the path to how to build the wealth. It's we hear that, oh man, you get rich in real estate, but it's like, well, how? And studying what I did was study these conversations I have with these people, I will go back and study their story. So Donald Sterling, Rick Caruso, they started off in duplexes in their early 20s, mm. in their mid to early 20s. They didn't start off with wealth. They didn't start off with, you know, Don Sterling changed his name. He was a Jewish guy. Or he is a Jewish guy, excuse me. He had a Jewish name and he changed his name to Sterling to fit in uh, at that time because more Jews had like discrimination. Um, Rick Caruso was, was a lawyer. He went to Pepperdine. But um, still, it's just not like he came like Donald Trump with massive Well, He had to build it. So uh, that, that was kind of like a long answer, but, but yeah. those are some of the conversations, man. Wow. Wow. So a couple of things stand out. One is exposure. You know, you had a lot of exposure to, to things as a kid. So you were even just being able to look around and see wealth or see that someone could amass, you know, fortune or have this car or live in this area or just be in a cafe in the middle of the week, looking, mm -hmm. living their best life. Um, right. <laughs> you were able to kind of see that and aspire to, to achieve that one day. Um, and then second, you, you were bold enough at a young age to, inquire and to ask these people how do you how did you get to what you're doing and how um you know how and then not only that like you said you went back you read their stories i think that's that's very important and also like the fact that you mentioned sometimes it can feel like that's so far beyond reach and so it's mm -hmm. great that now we can talk about it and share with people who 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 can understand where we're coming from on like the average person level um so that's that's exactly. awesome um great so so from there how did you how did you end up getting into real estate how did you end up deciding that you know what i want to i want to purchase something so it's, it's, it's funny man because in life if you don't act on um ideas it's basically like the architect with a blueprint that never gets a builder never gets a developer it just dies it just sleeps in his in his plans and his blueprint plans so uh, growing up, my dad owned property out here in LA as well. I didn't, I didn't go over that. Uh, that's another story. But, um, but I always just assume like, oh, I'm gonna invest in an apartment because I'm just gonna own real estate. That was just like in my head, and it was passive. I love passive income. It just seems, so, it seemed like a brilliant idea to me, right? But it wasn't until I got my first job um, after um, I graduated from Howard University, and it was like a big orientation, or not orientation, but it was like a company meeting where everybody. Uh, met like quarterly and I was a new guy, young uh, dietitian. And this older lady walked into me and said, are you married? And I was like, she looks kind of old to be asking me if I'm married, but I'm like, all right, let me just, let me just see what she's talking about. So I'm like, no, nah, I'm not married. And she's like, um, she was like, oh, okay. Um, well, uh, you should, you should, you should buy a house. And I'm like, all right. But she was like, you should buy a house and you should rent, you should rent out the rooms or you should buy a multi-unit, like a duplex, something like that, and rent out the units. And then you could live in it, they could pay off the mortgage, and then you could sell it when it goes up in value. And I'm like, oh, that's like, that, I mean, I have basic reasoning skills. So I'm like, that makes sense. Like, that's smart. Um, and she was like, my, um, my nephew just did it. He was in medical school or law school or something like that um, in Baltimore, like somewhere in Maryland. And it went up like 50,000 and he was able to sell it, like for, you know, and, and he reaped 50,000 and then he started his practice or, you know, went to residency. So that was the first seed in my mind. But um, again, we need like spurs or we need um, like to have a burning desire uh, to push us along to take action. So it was like a year before I took action. But the reason I took action was because um, one, my dad was also telling me I should get a house, but two, um, I wasn't making, I wasn't saving any money. I was working. I went to college. I followed all the rules and I, I, I like to look at my budget at the end of the month and I could barely save anything. And I'm like, 
what's my highest expense? I was paying $900 in rent at the time. I wasn't in LA. I was living in a suburb outside of LA for one bedroom apartment. I'm like, man, if I could live rent free, if I could get rid of this $900, I'd be straight. I could, I could save my money. And then it all started clicking. I'm like, man, they've been telling me this. I've been hearing about the real estate. And then that's when I, I started making the, the steps towards it. And I bought my first, so I didn't, I didn't say it, but I bought my first single family and I rented out the rooms like the, like the doctor told me, uh, the, the, the older woman I was working with told me. Wow. That's awesome, man. So walk us through that. Walk us through that first, uh, that first purchase. So I, I, I'll say this, man, I'm kind of philosophical and I deal with a little bit of mindset stuff too. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and the first thing was belief. The first thing was belief, bro, because, um, I didn't believe that I could own, I wish I could show you how like my spot is renovated in here. I didn't believe I could own a multi-unit in Los Angeles, like rent free, renovated, nice. I didn't believe it at first until I met people who had, who had achieved it. So the first step was, was actually just believing it. Like I can, I can make money hand over fist, live in, live in the master bedroom and just have roommates and just, just have cash flowing in. That was the first like belief because I'm just like, yo, that's crazy. It just was hard to conceptualize. But so I got over that and I started spending time in Barnes and Nobles and not buying. I used to do this as a kid. So I, I, I revisited this practice and I started reading books for free while I was chilling in Barnes and Nobles and then going home and coming back and reading them. And I just learned basically um, about the FHA, FHA program. Um, and I use the FHA program to do 3.5% down um and i followed some teachings by jay morrison he still has a video on uh, on youtube called how to get i think a perfect credit score or something like that and he gives all the game for free ever since i watched that video my my credit score has never gone below 700 and that was like years and years ago i just followed what he said in the video so my credit score up you don't even need a 700 credit score for fha i think you need like 580 or something like that you don't even need uh i think six 640 is like they won't charge you extra, you know, fees and stuff or higher interest. But I think 580 is like the minimum. But um, yeah, man, I, I I originally wanted a duplex or a triplex, um, but I didn't I didn't go with the duplex or triplex because of the area I was living in. It wasn't that many. Um, it's, it's an area called Lancaster Palmdale. It's not that many um, duplexes or triplexes in the nicer areas. So um, I found like a killer real estate agent. Um, I started going shopping. I got pre qualified. Uh, I started going shopping um, and uh, put in a couple of offers and I found, um, I found the, you know, the house that I, that I wanted and I, and I made the move. I do want to share something about getting qualified though, like a mm-hmm. story or some information if I may. Please do. Um, yeah. So like something that this concept that I have is like um, reverse engineering your goals. So once I set my mind and knowing that, uh, I want to get a multi-unit or I want to get a house. I, it's called a house hack where you live in one one room or multi-unit and rent out the other units. Um, I wasn't actually qualified yet. Um, but I basically had the, the house in my clutches because my mind was determined. I was I had the success mindset. So it was just a matter of time before reality caught up, right? So what I used to do is I'll put on a tie and a button down. I'll go into the bank. And I would uh, meet with the mortgage banker because if you go into the bank, uh, a lot of people don't know that mortgage lenders work for you. The whole purpose of them coming into, the, you know, working in the community is to close more loans for the bank. So if you walk in and tell them, I have this goal of using FHA to purchase a house, or I want to buy a duplex, triplex, fourplex, um, multi-unit, I want to play it, pay as little down as possible. They'll tell you what you need. They'll say you need your W-2s pay stubs, um, credit, credit report, all that. Um, and then they'll reverse engineer it. They'll, first, they may tell you, you don't, you don't qualify, right? You don't qualify for anything, or this is the least amount you qualify, and you may want more. Mm-hmm. But tell them, hey, Johnny or Sam or Mark, whatever the mortgage lender, or Sue um, or Jill, whatever her name is, um, say, hey, let's, let's reverse engineer this. What, what would I have to do to qualify? And he said, okay, you got to get your credit score a little bit higher. Um, I need you to see you worked for a year or um, I need you, you can't go conventional, you got to go FHA or you can't do this, you, you got to do that. Um, and, and they'll break it down to you. And what you could do is set smaller goals to knock off everything on the list. 
So I set the smaller goal of getting my credit score up, then getting this, the, the down payment saved up, then, you know, moving to this, moving to that. And so I got to the point where I was fully qualified. So I just want to tell people that there's no dream that's unattainable. If you could reverse engineer it, then you could just walk back up to the mountain, walk back up to the dream. And then just high fire it. I love yeah, it. So. I love it, man. Awesome. How many, uh, so how many, how many years ago was that uh, first purchase? That was, uh, dang man, we're in 2020. So uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, it was in 2015. Uh -huh. But um, I, I, uh, I started in the dream like in 2013, but I had a, I had a girlfriend at the, at the, at the time that didn't, um, I wanted to get her on board, but she didn't, she didn't see the concept, she didn't understand it. And um, I want to say that too. Don't let anybody deter you from your from your dreams, man, or woman. Um, because yeah, she she she. Because I'm from a nice part of LA. Mm -hmm. Really, it's like dope. So so I was showing her where I was from, mm -hmm. and she and we used to spend a lot of time go to restaurants and stuff. And she would mm -hmm. say like, um, "No, I want to live in this nicer part. We want to rent in this part." And I'm like, mm -hmm. "No, babe. Like, let's cop the duplex, cop the triplex. We can come strong to the neighborhood later with the passive income." Mm -hmm. And I got caught up in in her story belief, and it deterred me for like, uh, like a like a year and a half, two years. So it's 2015, mm -hmm. man. I, I did it in 2015, September 2015. I was 25 years old. Wow, that's incredible, man. And at that time, uh, what was the what was the part, around what around how much did it cost at that time? So at that time, uh, that if you recall, it, the value started climbing from 2011 mm -hmm. up uh, to like 2013. So they're still lower. It was 170,000 uh, with a 3.5 percent down payment. Um, so that would equate to about 6,000, somewhere around 6,000 for the down payment. Um, I will say this though that I know you. I don't know exactly how it works with the books, but uh, there's a book that I read that's called um, "Nothing Down in the 2000s." Oh, that's dope. Uh, by Robert Allen. So I actually Robert G. Allen. So I actually read this book. Um, because one of the goals was, uh, one of my hurdles was the down payment, six racks. And, um, I didn't know how I was going to save up six racks. Um, now I'm a better saver, but I was like, I can use my intelligence. I can figure out another way to do this. I'm not going to say exactly how I did it. Um, um, but he gives a lot of different strategies. I'll say, check out mm -hmm. the book okay. because there's some, there's some ways that are in the gray area. And if you talk to like mortgage lenders, they'll say, well, you know, if I don't see this, then we'll let it, you know, we'll let it slide. Or there's ways of getting like gifts from your grandmother or gifts from your sister or gifts from a family member. And you could pay it back to your family member, but technically you're not supposed to. Uh, it's supposed to be a gift. So there's different, there's different ways of getting the down payment. But this book is like a good 180, 200 pages. And it helped me get the down payment, man. Yeah, it helped cool, me get man. the down payment. Cool, cool. So from there, did you end up renting the rooms out as the, as the woman recommended initially? Yeah, it's 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 cra it's crazy, man. Before I jump to the rooms, I want to drop one gem uh, really quickly. Uh, yeah. And with the down with the down payment, uh, that wasn't just the only thing. There's also okay. something called closing costs, which are also about three percent. Got it. By reading these different books that the brothers recommended, Sam's recommended on this podcast, and reading this and they reading this book as well, I learned about negotiation in real estate deals, and I negotiated the other three percent, which was another six thousand. So I didn't have to pay for that. In total, I had to come to the table twelve thousand. Remember, I didn't have a dime. I didn't have. I had a couple of. You know, I probably had like a rack or something. But I used yeah. the book to get the six thousand. And I told my real estate agent, "We're going to negotiate for the other three thousand, um, because uh, excuse me, other three percent, which is six thousand, because um, um, I do something. I always ask the agent to ask them what's their motivation for selling." Because if they're highly motivated, I read about in the books when I was in Barnes and Nobles, they're, they're more willing to negotiate. They had a sick child and they wanted to move into a, bit, a bigger house. She had like a leukemia or cancer or something like that. Wow. And they were very motivated to move. So I said, okay, boom. Real estate agents will tell you, they'll never tell you why they're, why they're selling, but they will. They're just regular people, just like you and me. They'll tell you, unless they're business people, then they won't say anything. But usually just a regular person, they'll tell you. So I got that 6,000, I was able to close. But to answer your question, I rented out the rooms. Um, and I can tell a horror story about uh, one of my tenants that uh, that uh, it was a mistake that you guys can learn from and avoid. Yeah. Yeah, tell us but, about um, it. But yeah. Uh, so my very, well, my very first one was a young brother. Mm -hmm. um, and he was phenomenal. He was great. And he actually 
used to see my library and he 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 left the house and bought his own house hack because we used to we used to chop it up and nice. he was like i'm trying to be like you and i was like what wow. you mean man like you know i'm, I'm just chilling he said because i told him you i can use the house you can do whatever just don't touch my books yeah that's gold for me do not touch my books but it used to be glass and he could see the titles so he didn't touch it but he used to read the title and he said man uh, what's the deal with you so he ended up getting a five bedroom house, renting, living in one and renting out the rooms. So that was wow. the first tenant, he was dope. But the second tenant, I made a mistake. What I like to do is vet them heavily up front. So that means talk to, the, to the, um, their boss at the, at the job, do a criminal background check, do a credit score, um, make sure, have, a, have a, um, a calculation and ratio for how much they make compared to how much the rent is. Mm-hmm. So because it was renting rooms and it was low low uh, cost, I said, I think it was like 2.3 times as much as the rent in the room would cost. But in general, if you rent out a whole unit, it probably won't be exactly like that. It may be 1.5 or you know something like that, but you just have to have a number. And I would talk to the previous landlord and ask mm-hmm. about how, like what kind of tenant they were. Mm-hmm. So I had this white girl and she's great. I mean, she's awesome as a human being. Mm-hmm but she was a horrible roommate and she was coming from Buffalo, New York. And she was an engineer because I worked near um, air, uh, air base, uh, air force base with a lot of engineers. So she was an engineer. So I'm thinking, okay, she's a smart girl engineer. Uh, she just finished school. She just got the job. was making more money than me. So I was thinking, okay, she should be responsible, but I couldn't get in contact with any past landlords. And so I made the exception mm-hmm. and let her slide in without verifying with previous landlords what kind of a tenant she was. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was a horrible roommate. She was filthy. We was all guys except for her. She was the yeah. only girl. She was alcoholic. She was, uh, I mean, you can be free, have sex, it's all good, but she always had guys running in and out and her room was next to mine. She was always having sex and it was just, it was horrible, man. The other guys complained about her. Um, wow. She always paid her rent on time, but when you're doing a house hack like that and you're living with them, you have to do, they'll, they'll basically manage themselves if you get really good tenants yeah. um, and you vet them up front. You make it extremely difficult for them to get in up front. Um, another thing is sometimes meet them out at their car and check out their car and see if it's filthy mm-hmm. or in the inside of if it's clean. Um, and, 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 and it'll pay off in the long run, man. It'll yeah. pay off in the long run. Wow. So how'd you get her out? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, man? Uh, I just, I, I think we, we, we suffered a little bit. We talked to her about um, cleaning up. She got better with cleaning. Mm-hmm. Um, she didn't stop sleeping with the guys. And uh, I just tried to tell her to turn, keep, keep the, you know, the noise down a little bit. Um, I think uh, eventually she just got another job, man. She okay. got another job. Um, and then I ended up getting more new tenants, man. But I just, it's just, a, it's just a, a lesson learned, man. Yeah, but 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 the thing in real estate about people being afraid of it and stuff of, of the downsides is like, I'm building all this wealth. I'm getting, I'm living rent free, and I'm learning a minor lesson that's just gonna make life better in the future. Absolutely. So I'd rather learn that lesson than just be broke um, in the same cycle, not learning anything, good yeah. or bad. I'm just at a renting out a spot or 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 I'm hustling backwards. I'm not making money. So it was a it, it wasn't it wasn't a nightmare, man. She was just she was a tough roommate. Absolutely. And how, how many bedrooms was that house? So this one was uh, only a three bedroom, two okay. bath. I was in the master and I had two, um, two roommates. And to give you some numbers, I know we talked about numbers a little bit. I think it was like 12 um, or 13. No, it was like 1176 or something like that, the PITI. So that's mm-hmm. the principal, the interest, taxes, and insurance. Um, and I think I got 500 Fifty from one room, and I think five fifty or like six hundred from another room. So it just like right covered um, covered the mortgage, wow. and then I had them uh, split up the utilities. Gotcha. Um, so we just three three ways to split up the utilities, and so um, I I was stacking up, man, and the dream the dream came true, man, and uh, it was a it was an incredible learning learning experience, man. That's crazy. So here you are back then at the age of 25, living rent free, just paying some utilities, which is mm-hmm. just incredible. Where, where did you go from there? Um, so what did I do from there, man? I, I kind of hit a, um, I kind of had hit a, hit a, a tough spot uh, mm-hmm. at, at work. Um, I was working as a dietitian 
and I got um, underneath the supervisor boss that I didn't gel well with. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was in a, I was in a bind. I was I'm from LA, but I was living on the Palmdale. It's a high desert, Lancaster area. And mm-hmm. I went to get back home to um, to LA. So um, I ended up quitting the job. But because I had the real estate going and I was living free, I was able to quit the job and work like two part time, three part time gigs as a dietitian, and I started looking for properties out in um, out in, excuse me, look for jobs out in LA. Mm-hmm. So I went to move to LA. Um, and and grow at home, right? And so, I ended up finding a job in LA, and I was living with family while I was renting out um, the the master bedroom. So I was actually cash flowing. Nice. Um, I started cash flowing when I when I rented out the master bedroom. Um, so I'm cash flowing, and I was thinking about renting, going to get a spot, but somebody dropped a a seed in my mind of house hacking in LA. I'm like, no way, that's it's not possible. Like, how could with these with these prices, like how could it be possible? And and, and the FHA has certain rules where the rent has to pay uh, you know, seventy five percent of of the mortgage and it's like all these different rules and I'm like crushing the numbers and I'm like, this can't work. Like I, I, I just it can't work. And um uh, one of our favorite authors, Robert Kiyosaki, he says, Don't ask, um, you know, don't say I can't afford it. Ask how can I afford it? What am I right? That's one of his quotes. Yes. Yeah, that's his quote. So I'm like, man, like, you know, kind of feeling bad. Um, I'm seeing my property go up in value. It's climbing up in value. Um, but I'm just still like thinking like, okay, I can get it. I can get an apartment. I'm going to stand with family. But like, um, when I say apartment, apartment to rent, how am I going to do this? So um, I got a HELOC on my, that's a home equity line of credit on my, on my property because it went up in value. I think like uh, maybe 50 or 60,000. It yeah. went up. So can my you, initial idea was, go ahead. Can you explain um, to our listeners who may not know what a home equity line of credit is? Okay, yeah, yeah. So um, so thanks for that. I'm sorry. No, um, you're good. You're good, man. Yeah, so so um, basically when you purchase a property, um, equity is like the difference between the value in the home and what you owe on it. So remember when I said I bought it at 170? It was actually 172 exactly, but mm. let's say 170. Um, and the tenants every month are paying down the mortgage um, that I owe a little by little. So automatically you're gaining equity by the debt pay down. So uh, let's say the, they pay $1,000 towards the principal debt balance a month. In a year's time, that's $12,000 less. If I pay 172, now it's at 160. My equity is 12,000, right? Got it. But the beauty in real estate is that it appreciates over time because there's an increased population and increased demand, but limited supply in houses, right? Uh, especially in California, people love coming here. So the value of the property goes up, it appreciates, and say it goes up, to, I think it went up to like 220, uh, so that's like 50,000. And a home equity line of credit is, it's basically a line of credit based on that value in between what you owe and what the property has been praise for most banks credit unions are more um i guess you could say user friendly or customer friendly they'll give you more money but most banks give you like um a ltv loan to value ratio of like seven percent seventy percent loan to value ratio just means it's all all these different Mm -hmm. words you have to look up right but um loan to value ratio means if uh the loan uh okay so let's see how will i say it simply um, if the value of the house is 200,000 and the loan to value ratio is 70%, you're only going to get 70% of that 200,000. Got it. Right. But in reality, it's not even that. What it is, is if it's, if you owe 160 and the value is 200, it's 70% of the 40, $40,000 difference, 200,000 minus 160. That makes sense. So what I did was, yeah. So what I did was I got the 70% difference. Or I got the I got the seventy percent of the difference in the equity value, so I got like seventy percent of the fifty thousand gotcha. that was in in the in the in the property. And what that what that does is now you have uh, checks, or you can go into the bank and say I need twenty thousand, or you can have checks write a check for ten fifteen thousand. A lot of people just do home improvement, they pay off old debts, um, they pay for college, whatever, mm-hmm. buy a car, but. Um, I'm from LA, so uh, and I, you know, my father taught me, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna get debt, it has to make you money. 
Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So we don't just take our debt and go buy cars and liabilities. That's called hustling backwards for our problem. We don't, we don't get down like that. You take the money and you invest in something that's going to give you money back. So I said all that to say I got the HELOC because I was thinking about buying another single family out in that high desert area. Mm-hmm. But fate changed, changed my life because I was on the phone with a mortgage broker, um, his assistant, actually, a young lady. Man, I love her. She's still my friend to this day. And I was on the phone with her, and I'm like, man, I had this dream of um, buying a four unit in L.A., but I know it's impossible, and, you know, the, the numbers and all these rules, FHA, blah, blah. So I just want to get two properties with this, um, this home equity loan credit that I have and some money that I had saved up. And she's like, well, I mean, that's cool. We can help you get the two properties and um, rent out. Because I was going to rent out the rooms again. I was going to rent out all the rooms to, like, engineers. Um, and she was like, that's cool, but um, it is possible. I own, I own a four unit. I own two, actually, in L.A. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, yo, wait a minute. I said, I'm like, no, no, I'm sorry. I thought I heard you say you own two four units in L.A. I, I'm, you know, I'm tripping. She's like, no, no, you're not tripping. That's what I said. I'm like, you sound young as hell. How old are you? She's 28 years old. So is this how your eyes are getting big like that? I'm like, yo. So she's a little bit older than me, but um, mm-hmm. now she owns, um, um, her name is Lauren. I'm not going to say her last name, but yeah. her name is Lauren. Now she owns, uh, I think she owns two or three, I think she owns two four units, the same two four units, mm-hmm. um, but she's building, she got into real estate development. She's right. building um, a six unit mm-hmm. in South LA. Good. And it's uh, it's basically it's basically done, but she sparked the belief in my mind that I could get the four unit, and she told me which areas to look in, and that that sparked my whole train, and eventually um, I was able to get the get the four unit, man. Or it's, the, it's actually a triplex, got the triplex, um, and that's a whole journey and story uh, we can get into. But I'm just trying to explain yeah. the steps that got got up to it, man. Absolutely, absolutely. When did you uh when did you purchase the um triplex? How recent was that? That was recent, man. That was May 2019, man. Oh wow. It's yeah. not even not even yeah. a year. That's amazing. It hasn't even been a year. <laughs> wow. So talk to us about that. Talk to us about so you so you spoke to Lauren, you figured out it's possible. Um, it's possible. And so from there, you know, talk us through what that was like, um, what that process was like and purchasing and all that stuff. It was crazy, man, because uh, it, it was it, it was a journey, man. I learned a lot, um, cried along the way. It was tough, man. But uh, I want to say this first. Belief, desire and belief, because when I tell my story, people, people's story may not be exactly like my story. That doesn't mean that it's not possible for you. Yeah. So I want to tell my story. And people say, well, he did this. and Well, he bought his first property, so he was mm-hmm. able to get in L.A. Look, you know the story that I told myself? Even after Lauren told me she was married. So I said, ah, it's because they have two incomes. Ah, it's because they're married. Uh, and she got the down payment gifted from her family. Ah, it's because of the family. If you don't, if you believe that it's possible, you'll figure out a way. So I just want to say that first. So to tell my story, I realized, okay, scratch buying the other properties. Let's, let's figure out a way to get the multi-unit. Um, so my property started climbing more in value. It went up in value a little bit. I think it, it totally went up like 85 almost a hundred thousand in two years wow. went up that went up a hundred thousand so remember when i said our property went up like a million mm-hmm. out in la but ours was like in a nicer area mm-hmm. um this one in two years fifty thousand each year went up um and it didn't go up like each year it was in one year it went up the, the most so i decided that um i was going to sell that property and cash out and buy the multi-unit right so what I did was um, I checked out FHA, checked out, you know, different programs, but I discovered the NACA program, which my, which my homegirl Gabby who was uh, episode 13. Yeah. Previous guest. Yeah. She's out here in LA too. We went to, we went to, uh, how we went to Howard together. Small world, yeah, man. That's to, crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We went to Howard together and uh, we're in the same um, real estate, like uh, meetup group out, nice. out here in LA. Nice, and so I, I touched bases with her and she inspired me too because I ran into her. I'm like, you look familiar. Like you went to Howard, yeah. So we started talking. Mm-hmm. And um I was like, I'm trying to get a multi-unit in um in LA, but it's like super difficult. I'm going through the NAC program. She's like, I went through the NACA program. So I was like, oh snap. So it's inspiration. Yeah. So I learned about the NACA program. Bro, the NACA program pays for renovations. They allow for um your down payment to be gifted. 
they're real lenient with the credit scores. You don't have to have like a really high credit score. Um, you can buy down the interest rate. What does that mean? Interest rate determines the monthly payment on the loan. Mm -hmm. If you have a car that you purchase and lease or, or lease, no, no, not, not lease, uh, you finance and the interest rate is like 18%, you're gonna pay buku money. It's gonna be like almost like a mortgage or you're paying rent on that monthly payment. But you can get it down to like 0.25% or half a percent. My mortgage right now um, is at 2%. Uh, which is like incredible. I think the rates now are like 3.25 or 3.75 or something like that. But with NACA, you can buy it down. And buying it down means um, paying a certain percentage. Like you pay 1% of the total cost of the property. Uh, and that's the cost of buying it down a quarter of a percent. Uh, so if the property is $100,000, 1% um, would be $1,000. And that would buy down the interest rate from, for example, 3.75 to 3.50. It sounds kind of tricky, but mm -hmm. you can get the basics and then research it. It's very significant because it makes your monthly mortgage payment uh, lower and it lasts for 30 years. Wow. Um, so as the stadium is popping up, I'm right here by Englewood. Right. Um, as all the, as this gentrification is happening and all that, as I'm raising the rent every month on my tenants, my mortgage is staying the same, nice and low, nice and smooth, rent free, cash flowing. You know what I mean? That's how it's supposed yeah. to be. They pay for re they pay for renovations and rehab. They pay for down payment. I decided to go with NACA. Um, yeah. I went through the NACA journey. I don't know how Gab man. I didn't I didn't listen to Gabby's episode to be honest. I'm very busy. I'm a UCLA and everything. Yeah. But NACA is a journey, bro. Uh, how long NACA is hell? I heard that uh, to go it can be pretty, I heard that it can be pretty arduous. How long? How long did it take you to get from the beginning to the end of the NACA program? Man, <laughs> I, I I would say I never ran a marathon before, but I ran a marathon with with the NACA with the NACA program. I would say, man, my situation was unique. Everybody mm -hmm. who's gone, who who goes through the NACA program, they always say every situation is unique because it's true. It is. Mm -hmm. When I used to hear that, I used to be like, just tell me how how long it took you, man. Like, let me talk about yeah. that unique stuff. But um, but it took me to be a hundred percent, a thousand percent honest. It took me um like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. But in all reality, once I was like ready and all my stuff was lined up, it took um closer to like seven months okay so closer to like seven months the reason i say that is because i had to you can't own a property and go through NACA at the same time right so i spent time renovating my single family just this minor stuff like fixing up the cabinets in the kitchen and the bathroom mm -hmm. you get your most bang for your buck in the kitchen and the bathroom so if you're yeah. ever going to spend any money you do it you do you put some lipstick on her you paint the walls and you fix up the cabinets um, in, the, in the kitchen and in the bathroom. And if you can, the countertops. Mm -hmm. They're real simple. So that took a lot of time. Then I had to sell it. Mm -hmm. um, I went through escrow a couple times with some phony buyers on the first property. So that took some months. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, you have to prove that you can save up a certain amount of money to NACA. Uh, okay. to be able to make the payments on the mortgage for a couple of months, for like three, yeah. three to six months. Um, and then LA market was competitive as hell, man. It was, it was yeah. Chinese buyers, cash buyers, um, offering two hundred thousand dollars more than the than the than the four units were worth. Hundred thousand dollars more than the four units were worth. So um, I was ready by November, December, and I closed mm -hmm. in May. So Good. it's like a seven month seven month process. Once I had everything lined up, but in truth, it was like a, a year and a half. But it was because of my other house. Got it. How yeah. many how many offers did you end up putting in? Like uh, if you just just about if you remember, I do. I recorded it actually. Oh, wow. I counted. So I, I actually, I actually, um, I actually got my real estate license. I took some classes at UCLA Extension before I applied to just to get a taste of the real estate stuff to see if I really wanted to get my MBA. Mm -hmm. And I got my real estate license along the way. And I started. I was writing my own offers at first, mm -hmm. um, but it was stressful as hell. So I ended up getting a, a, a agent. Agent. Mm -hmm. But I'll say this: I recorded. I looked at over a hundred properties, analyzed over a hundred, over a hundred properties. Um, like when I say over a hundred, I mean like hundred five, hundred three, just over a hundred. Mm -hmm. And I put in offers on twenty six properties. Wow! And I went into escrow uh, three times. Wow! Um, before I got the before I got the the deal, 
and and this is something that I that I want to tell other people, um, and that I told myself. Um, I asked myself after everything was happening, everything it all went down. I said, if you told your yourself a year and a half ago or a year ago that it would take all this, but you would get that two percent interest, you'd be walking distance, jogging distance to the forum, to the new stadium, you'd be living rent free, you got stainless steel appliances, you renovated property. Would you do it? Would you hang in there? I said, yeah, I would, I would do it, man. If I came from the future and told myself, I would, I would stick it out. Yeah. So you can stick it out. It's going to be worth it because guess what? Earl Nightingale says, says this. Never give up on a dream for how long it's going to take because the time is going to pass anyway. Yeah. A year and a half is going to pass anyway. Yeah. Why not be rent-free, wealthed up, set for life uh, with the time? Make good use of the time. Definitely. Wow, that's, that's powerful, man. Over 100 properties analyzed, 20, 26 offers, escrow three times. I mean, the one thing that I take from that is, you know, you knew what you wanted and you didn't give up. You know, it's very easy. I mean, naturally, our natural inclination is to be discouraged, but, you know, you encourage yourself, right? You, you, you knew you had a goal in mind. You knew what the end was going to be. And, you know, it was worth it. And, I've, you know, I've heard from different people that the NACA process could be, um, you know, it could take some time, but if you think about it, if you don't have to put much in and it's paying for most of it, it seems like it's worth it. You know, I, I don't it's very much worth it. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's worth it, especially in a market like this. You know, if you can get that kind of assistance and you meet the qualifications and you can take care of you can take care of, you gotta get what you want in the end. Um, so I think it's really cool, man. Um <clears throat> what was uh what was the, the purchase price on that one? So I purchased it for six. See, I should know this. Um, cause it's, so I've been looking at the value. Yeah, six hundred like, or so. Uh, yeah, it's it's, okay. it's like six. I do, I do know it. It's six forty. Okay. But um, I I was looking. I was thinking about the value that it's increased to because it's gone up since I purchased it in six months. It's already oh gone goodness. up like tens of thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. That's really. L.A. Crazy. man. <laughs> tens of thousands, man. L.A. That's L.A. So I bought it at six forty. Um. But I got a loan, I got a reno, renovation loan, okay. a rehabilitation loan for like 60000 that was like included in the, yeah. um, in the thing. So in total, the mortgage was like 700000 Yeah. Nice. So how did, how did it feel when it was finally done and, and you were able to move in? How did you feel at the end of the finish line? Because, you know, you, you went through quite a lot to get there. So, so, you, so you, you know what, man? After I closed, it wasn't, it wasn't even, um, it, was, it was habitable, but up to my standards, I wanted to be renovated. So yeah. I, I'll tell this to tell this to some people too. Yeah. I think Gabby got hers, um, and I'm using, I'm sorry, because I mean, she's like my personal good, man. associate. Good. I'm like using, yeah, previous yeah. Uh, guest names and stuff. No I think, uh, some, yeah, some people, some people get their units already like nice. Um, and the flooring was nice in my unit. A couple things were nice, but the kitchen was horrible and the bathroom was way too small. It was like, I had to bust through it. It was a closet. I had to tear it down and all that. So for another like, two and a half, three months, I still had to go through the renovations of my unit. So it felt amazing. And I felt like it was like surreal, it felt real surreal. And it's crazy, the same week that I closed, I got into UCLA, I got the call that I got to UCLA, my dream school. So I was just like, I've been drinking less now, but I was like drunk for like a week. I was just celebrating. <laughs> it was like, it was, ridic it was ridiculous. But uh, it was surreal, man. And, 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 and I wanna say that second, that second escrow that fell through, um, I have an IG page. It's uh, living rent free at right. uh, what is it? Hashtag living rent free. Um, no G, just living rent free. And um, it's a picture of me standing in front of this beautiful triplex in Jefferson Park. So, uh, it's it's a block from where my father and all my aunts and uncles grew up. My grandmother still lives over there. I have like so many Christmases, Thanksgiving memories, like running over there, swooping over there. Um, and it fell through on my birthday. And I bawled, I cried. It was like, it was devastating, man. It was devastating. So to pick myself back up and finish and complete the deal, it felt like the end of a uh, of a marathon, man. Rest in peace, Nipsey Hustle. It felt like the end of a marathon. That's that's incredible, man. That's incredible. And um, so, how, what was it like finding tenants for that um, for your other two units? I know, you know. Was it different than your experience the first time? What was it like the second time around? So this this uh this time around is um it's a lot different, man, because the roommates was like the roommate style and the um and the laws 
Um, there's something called a rent stabilization ordinance out here in um, LA. So most of the properties built like before 1978 or some, some number, I can't remember exactly what it is, but they have a uh, rent control. Um, and it's a tenant friendly, they're tenant friendly laws. So a lot of them favor like the tenant over the landlord. Um, but I was blessed, man. I was blessed because I had two tenants already occupying the property nice. and they're on section eight. So, um, I would say about 75% or yeah, about 75% of the rent is, um, deposited into my bank account every first of the month wow. and early on holidays. Thank you to the U S government. Thank you to the Los Angeles city government. <laughs> yeah. So it's a blessing, man. If I, it's so, so this is crazy. Something crazy. I went to Germany. A few weeks after I closed on the um, property and I got into UCLA, bro, I was like in the house, June first, checking my account, whatever. Boom! It just hit. It just it just hit an account. Uh, passive. I don't have to knock on doors. I don't have to text nobody. I have to send a reminder. Yeah. Um, and I have some good tenants, man. I have an older older tenant who's been here for almost as long as I've been alive, and then wow. I have a younger tenant. Um, She's a little, she's a little ratchet. She gives me some headaches sometimes, but we have a relationship now. Yeah. I don't want to call her ratchet. I don't want to say that, but she's a little tough. Yeah, she's a little yeah. tough. Uh, but I think over time we got it. We build an understanding, a relationship. So I didn't have to find tennis, man. I'm, I'm happy about that, man. Wow, that's amazing, man. And you know, something I was thinking about is just the options that ownership gives you. You know, you had that first property up there. Um, in, in, in the Palmdale, Lancaster area. And, you know, you were able to, you know, utilize that home to buy another one and to, you know, give yourself more options in the future. So I think that's, that's incredible, man. Um, and now you're living rent free once again. There you go. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I mean, I just think it's very inspiring because for people in larger markets like New York, like LA, uh, it's, it's very easy for us to think that it's not possible. And I mean, I don't blame anybody who has that thought just because a lot of right. these prices can seem intimidating, but in fact, you know, there are, pro there are programs like FHA, you know, you have NACA with, you know, zero, zero down and all those, you know, a whole bunch and of stuff. And VAs as well. Yeah. VAs as well. So, yeah. You know, I think it's just crucial for us to share that. No, it actually is possible. Here are some things you could do. Here are some programs out there that you might be eligible for. So I think it's, I think it's awesome, man. Um, and I'm sure it comes in handy living rent free being a student. <laughs> Big time, man. It's, it's, it's expensive, man. But I, I'll say something else about the options, man. There's a guy, uh, Tim Ferriss, he wrote Four Hour Work Week. Mm -hmm. um, Gary Vee, all these, all these guys talk about uh, that, that. That's the thing with these concepts all on IG and social media. It's tough because they, they're so, it's like the cliches, they're so valuable, the information they put out. But because it's put out so much, it's undervalued. Like people, people take it for granted. But I heard Tim Ferriss say one time that um, something you could do if you had like an apartment, um, you could um, like rent it out on Airbnb and like go and travel um, and see the world um, or work from different, you know, if you, if, you, if you had a business that was like an e-business, you could work from different parts of the world and rent out your spot. But that was something that intrigued me because I had a friend who also bought a, a triplex and he would go to Mexico for like three months and he would work remotely and he would just work in Mexico. Um, shout out to Oliver. Uh, he's dope. Yeah. He just got his, uh, his law degree from Harvard, nice. but, um, but he always inspired me. I always had the thought in the back of my head. And I had another friend, her name was Joy, who um, was able to quit her job. She, she was able to start her, her business because she was living rent free yeah. in the triplex uh, in, in, um, in New Jersey, just outside of New York. Um, and she went through NACA as well. Right. And, and for me, um, I'm able to travel. And when I leave, I can rent out my, my unit and it'll pay for the trip. So you want to hit Catalina, you know what I mean? You want to hit Colorado. You put it, you put it on there, Airbnb, you put it on there on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the different vacation rentals and you travel. Um, and then as well, if something I'm, I'm doing now is, um, I'm going to be working part-time, uh, as a dietitian, part-time school. Um, and I'm still going to be able to save a significant amount of money because, uh, living rent free. Yeah. And, um, I'm going to start actually doing kind of what you're doing, but I'm, I'm using my platform, the IG living rent free yeah. to teach other people 
how to live rent free, regardless of where you are in the country. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start putting out more videos about it, more posts, um, because that's the lifestyle that's been afforded to me with ownership, right. with house hacking, with living rent free. So it gives you a lot of options, man. That's amazing. So you got Air Airbnb. That's 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 amazing, man. And you know, living rent free has allowed you to design your life in the way you want it to be you know because mm -hmm. like you said way in the beginning of the interview what just way back you realize your biggest expense as is with pretty much everybody is your housing costs and the fact that mm -hmm. you were able to eliminate that you know i'm sure it lifts the burden off of you it gives you options like you can kind of pick and choose what you want to do where you want to be you know you're going to school you're working part-time and mm -hmm. you know even back when you were in the other house you know you were able to leave the job. You didn't je you didn't jello with the boss, and you kind of picked up some things to keep you busy on the side. But can you imagine what your decisions may have been if you had to pay rent? You probably would have stayed in that job. You probably so many decisions would have been different if you did not have the opportunity to live rent free. So I think that's very powerful, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're a deep, you're a deep thinker, man. I I, I appreciate <laughs> it, man. Yeah, yeah, I like I like that. I like that. Because um, it's it's something that I realized um, now. I mean, I am working. I am working. Um, I am working full time now and yeah. full time in the part time school. But that's a goal of mine is moving to the to the part time, um, and just look at my expenses and see okay, how much am I still going to be able to cash flow and profit, um, and and, and put to the side, um, and just really work on spreading this message that like, hey, like, and also I think I love the black real estate dialogue. Like, more of us need to be living rent free yeah. uh, more of us and it's not just the it's not just the rent free like something i want to say is like with tax returns when it's time for tax returns um like my first property i would get like seven g's uh because of depreciation and you get to write off the tax the insurance you get to write off the interest you get to write off any repairs that you did um i've only been here for six months but uh my tax return this year is going to be like 10 racks um so it's going to be more once I'm here for a whole year, but, um, the, it, there's so many, there's so many benefits to it. And, um, we need more wealth. We need to close that wealth gap. Mm -hmm. And, um, another thing I want to say is like, we have to grow it. So like, it's not enough to just get the house hack, the first house. If you have equity, that's like monopoly money until you make use of it, until you pull out the, the HELOC and invest it until you sell that house and go buy a rental or sell that house and upgrade and do a 1031 exchange or move into another one it's meaningless that's how lauren that's how my homegirl um that owns the multiple properties did it as as her as her multi-units went up in value i think she bought one for like 600 it went up to went up to 750,000. so it went up 150,000. she was able to uh refinance it purchase another four unit and they just keep the ball rolling right so we need more wealth and more success and then we can share with other people. The reason that I'm really into real estate heavily is because of Jay Morrison, mm -hmm. who who is huge now, but back then he was large, but he wasn't as big as he as he as he is now. Yeah. Um, and seeing that image and and him coming with the swag and the and the culture of a, of a black man, I related to it, and uh, it made me want to get wealth. And um, I'll say uh, when I first sold it, I get had that that check. All that money, man. It, it you, you, you walk different. You know what I mean. You, yeah. you, you, your chest. My chest is usually out, but your chest is out. You know what I mean. <laughs> you, 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 you're moving different because it's not yeah. just the money. It's money from your own ideas. Right. It's money right. from your own effort. It's worth so much more than the money money you got from another man or from another organization. It's money that you've earned, you devise, and you design. So uh, we need more wealth, man. Yeah, we need more wealth in the family. For sure. For sure. Um, just an off topic question. Um, tell us more about your career as a dietitian. How'd you, how'd you get into that? Um, yeah, so this, it's weird. Um, I've always had like two passions and my, my sister, older sister who knows me the, the most because, um, she know me all my life. I'm, I'm the second oldest of five. My younger siblings, they came a little bit later. So they know me all of their life, but she's known me all my life. She knows that, um, business has always been my first passion, man. Business was always my first passion. That's why I'm at UCLA studying business. But one of my second loves was nutrition and like eating healthy. Um, my mother got cancer when I was a when I was a youth, when I was like I think twelve or thirteen. Um, and she passed away like five years later, like at seventeen, when I was seventeen. Um, yeah, so 
in that process, I learned about like Dr. Savi, and this was because Dr. Savi's office was on La Cienega, uh, La Cienega Road. There's La Cienega Boulevard, which is the main one, but there's like an off off street La Cienega. Mm-hmm. It's still there now, but like back then, it was like, like I said, it was VHSs. I used to watch his, his talks on VHS. It wasn't on YouTube back then, mm-hmm. um, and so I learned about like nutrition, eating healthy. Being in LA, being in California, it's all the vegan restaurants, the yoga spots. My mom would take me to all these vegan spots. So um, it made me realize I want to teach more people about eating healthy, about changing their lifestyle um, so that they can prevent um, obesity, heart disease, diabetes, hypertension. Um, And so that became my passion. So I studied at Howard. Um, I reached that goal. I've been working in nutrition for about almost like a decade. I know I look young, but it's been it's been a while. Um, Yeah. And so I am young, but uh, it's like about seven, eight years now. So. now I'm transitioning into the real estate thing, man. But um, I still, I'm still passionate about it, man. I'm, I'm doing it full time. Like I said, I'm, I'm pursuing like a part time opportunities, but it's still gonna be in, um, in, in nutrition. And then I'm gonna spend my other time creating this platform at real estate education about how to live rent free and share it. But, um, but yeah, man, nutrition is nutrition is dope. And I wanna say another thing too. Yeah. That's really important. Um, like sometimes people sacrifice their health in chase in chasing money. It's not advisable. It's not advisable. You want to live long as possible to enjoy and foster this wealth and pass it down uh, to to your family, to charities, do philanthropy. So um, you 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 gotta you gotta maintain the health, man. Gotta maintain the health. It's important. Definitely. Yeah, that's that's powerful, man. And you know, I think it's uh, you know especially powerful, inspiring that you as a black man are are in the nutrition space and you know you can share that you can share that like the health side and you can also share the real estate side um you know that's that's incredible man and uh what are what are you looking to pursue with your with your mba is your is your concentration in real estate it's got it's going to be in real estate man but um to be honest with you as i take more classes and i learn more and i meet different mm-hmm. people in different fields it just keeps opening up. So yeah. I'll, I'll say this, there's two things I'm, I'm focused on in real estate, uh, or like I should say at UCLA with the MBA is uh, uh, community development or social business, um, like philanthropy, that's like net impact, giving back, empowering the community, right? Uh, and then the other side is um, using the engine of real estate, using the engine of capitalism to generate money to give back in the community, do community development, Right. Um, do social business, um, give back because a lot of times we're donor dependent or grant dependent, and the donors don't always have our best interests in mind. Um, they don't always look like us. Those that don't look like us, they advocate for us. They only have limited funds. So um, I want to do real estate development definitely. But something that's intriguing, man, is real estate finance mm-hmm. because finance makes everything move. Um, and there's actually a lot more money, I think, in real estate finance than in real estate development. Mm-hmm. Um, and another thing with development is that it's slow. It mm-hmm. takes like months and sometimes years to develop large scale projects. Right. And it's kind of boring if you're just like killing it in real estate and you're like, okay, well, what am I doing next? Like I'm, you know, I'm managing a project, but it's like going in slow motion. So I'm thinking about doing real estate finance to keep me like busy while the development side is going slowly. Right, so I think right. those are the two, two things I want to um, do, man. But, um, but I haven't actually started taking real estate classes yet at UCLA. Okay. Uh, it's just the foundational classes, like business right. courses. So this quarter I'm taking financial accounting, economics, um, then you do like entrepreneurship, business plan, and then business plan design, all that. And then eventually you get up to like the real estate course or so your specialization courses. Definitely, for sure, for sure. And uh, are there any additional books that, that, that you recommend that have, that have helped you to uh, gain your knowledge, and you, you could also repeat the book you mentioned before, so people don't miss that. Now we're talking because that talking. was. So I want to ask you: is there is there like a like a top three or top? Oh no, like number we. No, however many you you want to you want to uh, shout out. Okay, okay so um, one book I want to say, man, I have so many. Man, I love reading books. That's another thing that helped me along the way. Yeah. Uh, I love reading books. I wish I could show you guys my my library, but um, <laughs> but uh, if it's like audio books. Um, it's good. I just want to say that if you can't, if you can't read it, get it in audio. Um, if you can't get it in audio, cause some of these books are going to be old. I'm going to talk about, um, buy them and read a paragraph at a time, read a page at a time. 
but get through the get through the book. Um, one one thing I want to say too before I go into the books is um, I met Rick Ross, the original Rick Ross. No oh, freeway Rick Ross. Yeah. yeah, freeway Ricky Ross. Right. So uh, he's from LA as well. So mm-hmm. drugs. My my father happened to um, my father happened to sell drugs too, but that's a whole other story. We don't have to get into that. Um, but I met him because he's like he's vegan now and he goes to a lot of health, healthy restaurants, right? But he didn't learn how to read until he got to prison. This is after he's a grown man, after he's mm-hmm. a big time, biggest drug dealer on the West Coast. Like, didn't even, he was illiterate. So when he got to prison, he learned how to read. Something crazy he said was, that blew my mind, was that um, book is like a cheat code because it's the wisdom that a man could gain wisdom for 25 years, two and a half decades. And you could learn that wisdom in a 20 minute to an hour span by reading the book. It's a cheat code. So some of the books I want to mention are this one first, Nothing Down for the 2000s uh, by Robert Allen. I think he updated, a, like he has like an updated version of it. Um, so maybe, maybe it's like 2010s or whatever, but uh, a lot of good information. Uh, let's see. Um, there's some highlighted parts, but it says negotiate uh, for low down or nothing down deals. Mm-hmm. So that's why I first learned that, hey, I, I don't have to pay 12,000 down payment. I can ask the seller for six thousand because he's motivated to sell. Yeah. And my agent said, "There's no way he's gonna do that. No way he's gonna accept it." I said, "You work for me, please. Just put it out there." Right. The person signed off for it. I was six thousand just for asking for it. So this is a really good book. I recommend that you learn how to negotiate. Oh, and I had to negotiate. Um, like on this deal, I think I got twenty thousand from the seller negotiating. Wow. Yeah. So negotiation is cold. My my agent this time was like man, you're such a great negotiator. Like, how did you learn this, this and that? But it's in the books, man. It's all out here in the books. So just read the book. Um, that book goes over negotiation. Um, another one is, um, this book is more so like the mindset. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to read a lot of like mindset, um, motivation, self-help action books. The reason is, is because um, most of the time, like the knowledge is not enough. You have to have the drive, the motivation, the inspiration to go out and get it the self-belief, the self-faith and the confidence when you get knocked down, you get back up mm-hmm. and go and get it. So I always read self-help books. Um, this book is called I Will by Ben Sweetland. Sweetland is sweet like uh, S-W-E-E-T-L-A-N-D. Um, if I had to recommend one book that would change it all, mindset book, that will turn everything around, it would be the I Will Ben Sweetland. That's Overthinking Grow Rich. That's over. All these wow. other books I've ever read, I Will by Ben Sweetman. That book has like changed changed my life. Um, another book by a brother from Bigger Pockets who I really admire. Uh, his name is Scott Trench. Mm-hmm. Um, young white dude, he's about my age. Uh, he really advocates for like investing in stocks, house hacking, um, being really fit and like healthy. He's like, you should be working out five days, six days a week. Like, you should be eating healthy. Like, stop eating trash, whatever. But he has a book called Set for Life. Um, and that's one of my top 10 probably real estate books of all time. Um, he basically walks you through being broken in debt to being financially free through real estate um, and like investing and goal setting. And he teaches you how to house hack. So he, he uses like house hack, refinance, uh, get, the, get the second house hack, refinance, get the next house hack, buy rentals. Go from there. It's like an amazing book. I would say get that. And it's on audiobook. Nice. Um, this book is probably, uh, if I had to recommend one book for personal finance and real estate for black people, I have a YouTube video that's like 38 minutes, 40, 40 minutes on this book. Um, it's called Black Folks Guide to Making Big Money in America by George Shabiro. It was the rich dad, poor dad for black folk before Rich Dad Poor Dad even came out. Wow. It was the um, personal finance and budgeting book, How to Get Your Credit Right, the Jay Morrison, before he was even born. Well, I don't know if it was before he was born. It was in the 70s, late 70s, so maybe he was born. But um, it was like all these books way before that. It's a little outdated because it doesn't talk about the internet because the internet didn't exist. But he talks about how to get your money right, how to get your credit right. Um, how to um, start a business, how to budget, um, what wealth means, what's an asset versus a liability, and he plans to see the buying um, a triplex or fourplex and using the equity to start a business. If you look on the internet, 
that's that's a way to that's a simple way to wealth. Like we talked about how to get to become millionaire status and all that. Just simply put, I know we're talking about the books, but just let me add this. Say a young sister or brother buys a fourplex, it goes up a hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand over time. That money could be taken and starting, and you can use that to start a franchise. And it's they can't discriminate against you because you're black. They can't have an old boys club because you're a woman. Because you have hard value equity in your house worth 100, 250,000, you can borrow against it and start a business or buy a larger part of the building, right? Mm -hmm. So he talks about that. Uh, the next book, I would say um, Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice mm -hmm. by Dennis Kimbrough. Um, Think and Grow Rich, everybody talks about it on your podcast and on all podcasts because it's like the best, it's the most, one of the most uh, best sellers of all time in terms mm -hmm. of self-help um but i like to think you grow rich a black choice version because some people don't know but um napoleon hill was going to write a book for black people specifically uh with think and grow rich and he had a manuscript but he died before he could finish it wow. and so dennis kimbrough yeah they came to him napoleon hill society came to him uh w clement stone came to him and asked dennis kimbrough to write it and finish it and so just from our perspective people from all over the world um talks about some so i think you're haitian right are you yes, Haitian brothers? Yes. Yeah, it talks about some Haitian brothers that uh, wow. were dominating real estate. People who uh, there was a brother who, who uh, started a Chicago was Haitian. And so, right. so, so they just go through history and go Damn. through like um, wealth, wealthy black people and their mindset, right? So I would say get that. And I speaking of uh, W Clements, go ahead. You gotta pick up. That no, one. Sorry, I gotta pick that up, man. That book. No, that one, bro. So basically, when my when that triplex fell through. Um, on my birthday and I was crying, mm -hmm. I like crawl to Think and Grow Rich and there's a chapter in it called Persistence and there's a chapter in it called Faith. Yeah. And I was crying, I'm telling you, I was sobbing, bro, because the, how the, the deal fell through and I was reading the book with tears dropping on the pages, but it talks about persistence and faith. And the next day I, I woke up and I had an epiphany saying, go to this neighborhood, look in this neighborhood, and start looking for houses, get out the bed. Cause I couldn't get out the bed. I was depressed. I was like, fuck man, this deal went through. I fell through, I went through. And um, that book helped me with the mindset, helped me push through. So I would say read it. Um, and then uh, Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude by W. Clement Stone. This man lived to be 101 years old. He um, at one time in the seventies was Forbes um, richest man uh, in the world. Um, he wrote a book called Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. I read it back in, I think, 2017. Man, that that book changed my life. It yeah. charged me to get, like, a really nice physique. Yeah, it had me running and working out again. Had me um, just on the train to, to success, man. That book is, like, a top. That's also on my top 10 uh, self-help books. Um, it'll have you charged up, man. Um, and then I think I have one more book, brother. Um, this one is Millionaire Real Estate Investor by Gary Keller. Mm -hmm. A lot of people talk about it. And it's kind of like a, um, I don't know, like not cliche, but it's just so good. I can't not mention it uh, because it tells so many stories. First, he starts off with mindset. That's why I'm always talking about mindset and stuff. His first few chapters are on purely on mindset. So, um, you know, it's important, the mindset, but he breaks it down, goes through mindset. And then he tells you all these different stories about, well, that's at the end, all these different stories of successful uh, real estate investors, but he breaks down how to become financially free in real estate in a very practical, very straightforward, simple way. Um, I think the average person is to start off house hacking, in my opinion, because it's the easiest, because you can use a residential loan, which is easier to qualify for, um, to get into a multi-unit. And then from there, you can use the conventional investor loans to get those rental properties. You own right. one, you said you own a rental property. It's a little more stringent, it's a little more difficult when you're, when you're an investor to get a uh, loan. So, um, but he does break it. He breaks it all down, man. So I would say yeah. get that book, man. Uh, that that book is amazing. Cool, man. And uh, how can how can people reach you? How can they find out more about what you're doing and and be in touch with you uh, if they have any questions and want to connect further? I would say go to that IG page. I said um, living rent free. It's um it's living without the G. So L I V I N rent free. Uh, so hashtag or what is it? I, I'm sorry, I'm not thinking at, with at, social media. <laughs> at, yeah, there you go. No, at, you're good. At, <laughs> at, at living room free. Yeah. Um, I would say just go there, man, and from there, uh, we could talk. We could we could talk on the phone. I could give my email. We could just hit the DMs. Follow me. Um, I could tell you the YouTube videos, all that from there. 
but that's the that's the focus right there cool man wow this has been great this has been great i mean i'm inspired i'm sure our listeners will be inspired um for our listeners you know it's possible to you know purchase a home in a big market it's possible to live rent free or at least close to it in a big market it just takes some creativity you know looking for the information that's out there and and getting it done so mark i appreciate you coming on brother thank you for the invite man appreciate you absolutely and for our listeners you can find us on instagram at black real estate dialogue you can also purchase merchandise at gum.co backslash bred also you can follow us on twitter at bread podcast b-r-e-d podcast thank you all and look forward to connecting with you all soon